Oh. Hope came home from school with a fever. Sure enough, didn't go away. So five days later, we found ourselves at a, another hospital here in the valley, and they sent us home. I have a, a medical family, and they were all screaming at me, get your kid to Phoenix Children's Hospital. We rolled into this place at 10 o'clock in the morning on Thanksgiving morning. The night after Thanksgiving, while waiting for a lot of test results, um, when I was putting Hope to bed, uh, she looked in my eye and she had a stroke. She had a massive stroke. Every alphabet doctor we could think about was, was here. Instead of being with their family, they were here. It wasn't the second string folks that were here, it was the A team. And they're here on Thanksgiving Day. And the tests that began were exactly what we needed. Um, unfortunately for Hope, it was just too late. The stroke unfortunately affected um, Hope's left brain. We went from a healthy 13-year-old girl with a fever to a girl that had lost most of her cognitive abilities. She had lost the ability to speak or communicate in any way. She could, speech and language were wiped out. You'll never have a conversation with her ever again. She won't walk. She's not going to talk. And then it sinks in. The neurologist was here 24-7. There was a lot of people dedicated to my daughter. I think that I am not going to talk ever again. And um, when I was in the hospital, I cried and cried and I was thinking that I could not have any friends. Tell me when you got a little bit of hope back. The first indication that hope was in there um, was a reaction when her, uh, they're now her stepbrothers, um, when they came through the door. Um, she had an instant reaction and this very skinny little gnarly hand came out of the bed and tried to grab one of the men. She's in there. We just got to help her out. Yes. And that's when the fighting began. And it was a fight. It was a knockdown, drag out fight. They're ready to do that. But then as things got better, you see your vision goes from tunnel vision and it started to expand out a little bit. And you start to actually see what's going on. And you realize it's Christmas time. There's this club here that nobody talks about, and it's, it's the Orange Bracelet people. It's a club you never want to be part you of. You don't want to be in this club. Yeah. You don't want to be in it. But when you're down in the cafeteria at 2.30 in the morning, and you've got your little orange bracelet on, and you look around, and all these other people have their orange bracelet on, their kids are sick. It's the holidays, and you can't do your normal holiday thing. At this point, I hadn't shaved in a month. <laughs> I mean, it was like, I'm not going Christmas shopping. I haven't yes. left. I'm not leaving. And then all of a sudden, there's this hospital. It thinks of all that stuff for you. It was a miracle. Really? Yeah. When you look back, you think it was a miracle. Why do you say that? Because I, the doctors told my dad that I was not going to make it. November 28th is when I had my stroke. And so I come in here on the holidays and I say hi to the nurses and the dogs and to the doctors. It helps so much. All the people were coming in to perform the walk, and it, it made my day. What did you want to say? What did you want them to feel? Happiness. Thank you.